Hello class, this is section 1.4 and in this video we are going to discuss steady state solutions for insulated boundaries. So this time we have again an iron rod, we say it's 12 meters long and we've stuck some cotton wool on both sides of the rod so heat cannot leave or enter from the sides from the left end or the right end and we're asked first to calculate the steady state solutions for this rod there's a second part of the problem too, but let's ignore that for now. Um, so what does it mean that we have perfectly insulated boundaries? Well, it means that the derivative with respect to x never changes at the point 0. And this also means that the derivative with respect to x doesn't change at point t. So the cotton wool prevents the temperature from changing the x direction at 0 and at 12. So let's see if we can use that. So again, uh, remember that steady state solutions satisfy the heat equation. Partial u, partial square x, k equals partial u, partial t. And this should be, of course, partial x squared. And we know that we, since we have a steady state solution, this is equal to 0, and we are really solving partial u, partial x squared equals 0. And just like the previous video, we know that this means that u of xt is equal to ax plus b. So let's now just plug in our, our boundary conditions. So we have um, partial derivative respect to x equals to a. But we know that partial u of 0 is 0. Partial u, 0t, partial x. This is equal to a still, since this, this a is constant, doesn't depend on x. But we know that this is equal to 0, just based on the boundary condition here. This implies that a is equal to 0. Now the second boundary condition doesn't give us any new information. If we plug that in, we still get 0 equals partial u 12t, partial x equals a, so again a equals 0. So since we have no restrictions on b, we conclude that our boundary condition must be u x t a is 0, so we must have b. And this is our steady state solution, which is a constant. Now let's think about whether it makes sense. Uh, let's look again at our iron rod with cotton wool on it. So it, it does make sense that if you leave the, the, the raw iron rod at a, for a long time, eventually heat will flow from the hot parts of the rod to the cold parts and then the temperature everywhere will be the same. So that does make sense if we get a constant. Now we don't know what constant we get so we need some additional information to figure that out. So let's look at the second part of the problem. So if we assume that the temperature at the start of the experiment is ux0 equals x squared, it means at the start of the experiment the left rod has 0 celsius, temperature of 0 celsius, and the right half of the rod has temperature 144 Celsius, for instance. We assume also that after a long time, the temperature tends toward the steady state solution. Now what is the steady state solution it tends to? That's the question we're asking. And we can use what we've done previously. So we know that the steady state solution is a constant, and we need to ask what constant. Now, to solve this problem, we need to use a bit of physical intuition. And let's first note a few things. Now, if you rem may remember, the energy density is equal to C times rho times the temperature. So again, uh, while temperature is not exactly the same as energy density, energy density and temperature are very closely related. Now, rho is the density of the object, and C is the specific heat. Both those things are constants. So temperature is really a constant times the energy density. Now you may remember that the way to calculate the total energy of the rod is integral of Ext dx 
from 0 to 12. This gives you the total energy of the rod. That's the amount of energy that's contained inside this rod. Now, notice that since both ends are insulated, no energy can escape. And energy never gets destroyed. So it means that the amount of energy that is in the rod at the start of the experiment is the same amount of energy that's in the rod at the end of the experiment. Right? So in other words, this thing is constant with respect to time. Because energy cannot escape from the cotton wool ends of the rod, it stays in there forever. But since temperature, U, is just a constant multiple of energy density, this also means that this Uxt is constant with respect to time. So let's think about what that means for us. So we know that the temperature at the start of the experiment is x squared. Let's figure that out. So let's do this, do this integral. The integral from 0 to 12 of u of x 0, uh, this should be dx here of course. This is equal uh, dx here. This is equal to the integral of 0 to 12 x squared dx. We integrate this to get x cubed 3 going from x equals 0 to 12. And this is just going to be um, 576. Um, yeah, you just plug in 12. 12 cubed is going to be a huge number, but you can calculate that without too much trouble. But we also know that since this is constant with respect to time, that the temperature for a large time is also equal to 576. So T, remember capital T is for a large time. So after a large time, this is what it is. Um, and we know that for a large time, our temperature approaches the equilibrium temperature. So this means that 0, 12, and our equilibrium temperature was just going to be B. This comes from what we did previously. Um, remember that Uxt is just B. That's a steady state solution. E equals 5, 7, 6. And this implies that 12, well, let me do it a bit more slowly. This implies that Bx going from x equals 0 to 12 is equal to 5, 7, 6 b times 12 is equal to 5, 7, 6, and b is just going to be equal 48. So this implies that as t goes to infinity, u x t must equal to 48 Celsius.